Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to take our first look at Kangaroo for Grasshopper. Um, if you don't have Kangaroo, you can get it from the Food for Rhino website. Um, just go to Food for Rhino, and then you come down here to Grasshopper add-ons, and it should be under most download. In fact, it looks like it is the most downloaded plugin. Alright, cool. So, let's say you've got that and you've loaded it up. Let's, uh, let's begin to look at what it is. So what is Kangaroo for starters? <coughs> Pardon me, Kangaroo is a physics engine for Grasshopper. It allows us to do uh, simulations. So any sort of Kangaroo simulation that you want to do has to use this Kangaroo physics object. This is, this is the processing power of Kangaroo. And so it takes a couple of inputs. It takes four subjects, and so four subjects are anything that you can find in this tab, as well as a couple of custom ones that have been made over here. Um, we we also have um, your anchor points, uh, sort of any pieces of geometry that you want to stay completely fixed. Your settings are, if you do want to change anything or anything about how the solver works, we do have this uh, component which allows us to to change any of those numbers. Um, we'll, and so then anything that you, any sort of geometry that you're working with, you plug straight into here in the geometry tab and your simulation reset obviously resets the simulation. So let's, uh, let's just set up a dummy simulation to see how we would actually use this. I'm just going to bring in a center box and let me just make that a bit bigger, plug in the slider and I'm just going to up the values on this. So here's my box. Um, I should note that Kangaroo only works... Well, I don't say only. Kangaroo... Kangaroo works with mesh geometry and curve geometry as the input. There are some special cases in which you can, you can set up, say, collisions with... Um, what do we have? With a like a well, you could do like a surface collision, um, but any geometry feeding in here has to be a mesh because meshes are far easier to compute, and that's what a uh, that's what kangaroo deals with. So I'm going to take this box now, and I'm going to turn it into a mesh box. And then we'll we'll hook that up, and I'm going to chuck down a slider for my divisions over here. And I'm going to set this to, oh, you know what, I'll set it to a maximum of 20. And then I'll plug that into my X, Y, and Z. And we'll shift that number up. Alright, cool. So now I'm going to preview these off. I'm going to plug them into my, I'm going to plug the mesh box into my geometry tab over here. And now we're going to lay down some force objects. So, one of the most common force objects that you'll use in virtually every single definition is the springs object. Springs basically define um, how this, how your surface works. Basically, the underlying tension and um, well, all the stiffness, um, the rest length. These these are all sort of key material properties of your mesh that you can that you can work with and and tinker with. So the first thing you need um, is a connection. So a connection is just a line and so in order to get a line um, I prefer, okay for this I would also recommend that you get the Weaver Bird component because Weaver Bird has this really good component which is called Weaver Bird Mesh Edges which will just output all your edges in the um, in the mesh and then you can plug that into your connection and then we should also have, uh, plug in a, oh, well, basically, that's the only thing you need to plug in. Anything else is a sort of um, an additional input. So we could also plug in a uh, something here for the rest length, because I'm, I, I might want to tweak that just so that we can see uh, what we could actually do with this uh, kangaroo plugin to run a simulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the length of each of these curves using my length component and I'm going to multiply it 
by the slider over here and I'll just set that slider to 1 and then plug it into my rest length. Alright, so then my what my springs and any sort of force object outputs is some sort of force of some of some sort. So you can see out here we get we get this spring force. Um, and so that will just go into our force objects into this component over here. And then we can see our mesh is now changed because suddenly it's recognizing a whole lot more inputs. So cool, that's working for me. Um, the last few things I need to get the simulation running are a boolean and a timer. So the timer, you uh, the timer is a special kind of component because you don't plug it into or you don't plug it into anything the usual way. You drag on this uh, this arrow over here and then you just connect it up to the bottom of this uh, solver component. The time is used exclusively for any kind of solver geom or any kind of solver objects. There's uh, there's not many, but uh, Kangaroo is one of them. And then we can change sort of the update interval. And one second is going to be far too slow for me, so I'm going to take it all the way down to 20 milliseconds. And then I'm going to plug this boolean in. And so well, how this works is this is asking should the simulation be reset and if you're saying if you have true over here then the simulation is never going to actually play out so as soon as you set this to false the simulation is now actually running you won't notice anything immediately just because our uh, our mesh is currently resting at a or at a state that it originally was in. So what we're also going to do is we're also just going to plug out, take out our, uh, our output of this geometry out with a mesh so that we can turn off this, uh, preview off this kangaroo physics object which will hide all our points and lines and everything that would otherwise be getting in the way. Cool. So now this is running and as soon as I play around with the slider you should see some changes. So you can see now, um, I will just reset the simulation. As soon as I changed this value over here, it started to uh, have an effect on my mesh. And uh, that's, I mean, that's the basics of how Kangaroo works. All right, so now, uh, Let's uh, let's mix this up a little bit. Um, I mean that's all well and good. We're basically just crushing that mesh box over there. But I mean that's we can do a lot more than that. So I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to. You know what, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to replace this boolean toggle with a button. I prefer to use a button because this. Um, this button has, you know, it's it's false until you press it, which means that the moment you press it, it resets the simulation, and then it uh, keeps going, which I think is pretty neat. We can just, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit easier, but yeah, all right. So we're going to take this box that we created over here, and we're going to deconstruct it, so that we can get a list of vertices which we're going to plug into our anchor points. So our anchor points are any geometry items that we want to stay fixed. We don't want them to move. So now watch as I hit this button. You'll see these corner points, the points, or the sort of corner points of my box, they're all staying completely fixed. And I can pull this slider right down and what we're basically going to get is a box in complete tension. Um, and so that's that's a pretty neat result. You can see that's uh, that's our output. Um, you should also notice at this stage that um, we are getting this weird sort of um, thing happening where we have it, where we have defined edges um, right along here. 
and that happens on every single side, and that's basically because of the way um, the mesh is constructed. So, if I were to bake out this mesh, you can see that the edges along here are very defined, and that's because um, grass, oh, grasshopper and rhino, they sort of read this collection of faces as one group of faces, and then this collection of faces over here is one group of faces, meaning that along this edge, um, or basically the um, the information, the edge information does not sort of smooth over, which is all well and good for a cubicle mesh, but for this mesh coming out of kangaroo, I mean that's not exactly what we want. So the fix is really simple. We just use a mesh weld vertices component. Um, this is a custom component which comes from a plugin called Uto or Mesh Edit. It's one that I use a lot and you should be using too if you're working with meshes a lot in Grasshopper. You'll see as soon as we bake that, we get that nice smoothing out of our of the details of our edges of our mesh. All right, cool. So that's uh, that's enough of that. Let's uh, let's see what else we can do with this simulation. We could um, what we could actually do is we could plug in another force object. And so what I'm going to plug in is what's called a unary force. And so the unary force is basically, um, I guess you could think of it as gravity. It's uh, basically you, you plug in a point or a collection of points and you give it a force vector and it'll push that point in that direction. So let's see what I mean by that. We're going to deconstruct this mesh. And then we're going to plug all our vertices into the points over here. And then we're going to plug a Z vector into our force. And so at the moment uh, that Z vector is pointing up, gravity does not point up, so I'm going to change this slider around a bit. So I'm going to give it a maximum value of 10, and I'm going to make it negative. And, you know what, I'll make my minimum value negative 10. Alright, and then I'm going to set this all the way up to maximum value of 10. And I'm going to plug my unary force into my force objects as well as the springs. And the, um, the kangaroo solver is going to break immediately. That's because it's uh, registered a change and we haven't reset the simulation. And this is not a huge issue, we just reset the simulation. And, uh, ah, okay, this is another thing I need to point out. Um, a lot of the time, if you, uh, yeah, there's this interesting sort of issue that happens where a kangaroo doesn't know what to do when you've got sort of multiple data structures plugged into these, com uh, these inputs here. So you can see we've got two trees of data coming in here in, in our force objects list. So all we need to do is just flatten this, and then when we reset the simulation, kangaroo's happy again. All right, um, for the purposes of this simulation, actually I might really ramp up the, um, the numbers here, just so that we can see what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna preview my mesh on, and I'm gonna reset my simulation. And let's start adding some gravity. And so there you go. We can see that we're now uh, we're now getting a lot more tension in this object. And you can see it's it's almost as if it's got a bit of weight to it now. It's really being pulled down in the uh, in the z-axis. And then we could quite simply just uh, edit this slider, and uh, instead we could push it all the way up. And we could push it all the way back down. And a uh, neat, neat little trick that I um, learned a while back, actually, I can show you now, is, um, okay, what we could do is we could throw in another timer over here, and we could use a counter. And I'm just going to plug this timer into this counter over here. 
Oops, I only want one timer, so let me just grab a new one. Um, I'm going to keep it at one second, and we'll see if it's counting yet. It probably won't be because I need a button. Okay, so it's going to start counting. And what we're going to do is we are going to... Uh, we're going to go... We're going to grab an expression, and we're going to say... Um, X percent 2 and so this is always going to give us either 0 or 1 and so then we could multiply this result over here by this here and we could create a really neat sort of dynamic simulation where um, every time the force direction changes we're getting a sort of an update in our model in the simulation. Cool. All right. So this has been a uh, really, a uh, really brief sort of intro into Kangaroo. We're definitely going to take a look at this plugin a lot more over the next few lessons. So uh, hope you enjoyed it and had fun with it.